Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the Cultural Modeling Program. To take you through the program, my name is Slesha Kandit. This evening, we are looking at the 2010 census. And I am very, very privileged to have two very, very special guests. This is the Deputy Secretary of the Cabinet, Mr. Ivan Stuliti, and the Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, Mrs. Shelley Tori. They will help us understand what government has done to prepare for this very, very, and very national event. Good evening and welcome to the program. Uh, good evening. Uh, Thank good you evening. very much. Thank you. How has been your Sunday? Very quiet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perhaps to get on with the program, DSA, want to understand what the structure of the 20 cen census is in terms of organization. That's right. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Um the census is a very large undertaking by government, and um, for that reason, you need the entire government machinery to be behind the organization and management of the census. Uh, it is organized in such a way that government can put its full weight behind this organization and management. So at the apex of the organizational structure uh, for the census, uh, you have uh, a cabinet committee, all right, of cabinet ministers. Uh, immediately below the cabinet committee of uh, ministers, you have um, a national census committee, which is chaired by the secretary to the cabinet, whom I'm representing here. Immediately beneath this uh, national census committee, you have uh, a steering committee of permanent secretaries, okay. all right, and then uh, the steering committee works with the Central Statistics Office mm -hmm. to run the census. Mm -hmm. That is uh, briefly the structure. People who understand why you are here, they might be wondering what is the PS Science doing in on the program. The PS Science and Technology Science Technology and Vocational Training is a permanent secretary. Yes, uh, we put in place a steering committee of permanent secretaries. It had to be chaired by a, a permanent secretary whom the secretary of the cabinet felt uh, could do the job mm -hmm. at this particular point in time. Mm -hmm. So she was appointed by the secretary of the cabinet okay. to run this effort. Okay. It could have been other permanent secretaries, yes, indeed. but in this particular instance, um, the secretary of the cabinet felt that uh, Mrs. Sherry Tolle uh, should uh, handle the assignment. Excellent. Mm -hmm. want to understand as we get on with the program, why is government conducting the 2010 census of population and housing? A census is an exercise mm. periodically conducted by virtually all governments in the world. Mm. In our case, we do it uh, every 10 years or so. Uh, this exercise is to physically count the number of people uh, in the territory, in the country, mm -hmm. uh, to establish their age, uh, how many are children, how many are adults, mm -hmm. uh, to count the, 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 the housing stock, mm -hmm. um, essentially to develop basic uh, statistical data mm -hmm. about the population. Mm -hmm. uh, this information is then used for planning purposes. Uh, to enable the government to be able to target uh, uh, the provision of um, uh, social services. Mm -hmm. yes. In terms of the theme, Madam Tolle, you are the chairperson on the committee of PSCs mm -hmm. we have understood this evening. Um, the theme is saying help the census help you be counted. What is the relevance of this theme from your understanding as the chairperson of this committee of P Yes, it's to socio-economic issues like education, health, housing, agriculture, and so on and so forth. Mm, like the, the DSC has said, mm. uh, the census is all about collecting data and mm. information on people and making sure that the planning process, you know, the data that is supplied is used in the planning process. Mm. And so we think that the theme is correct to the extent that you know, from the government's point of view, we'll be able to plan on where to build a school, mm -hmm. where to put a hospital, a road, uh, the, the infrastructure as it were, and also how many people are there and what is their age. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to say how many, how many people are, for example, the youth, 
uh, in that particular area. Mm. Uh, this information you can only get from the census. And then, of course, to be able to provide water and electricity, the different amenities for, the, for a decent living. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we need the census to be able to provide the data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, DSC, th there is the issue of uh, people looking forward to benefits. You are explaining, yes, it's used for development, but uh, people might argue to say, we, we've, we've seen development, but what, what difference does the census bring in the process of development planning? Uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, there is development taking place. Uh, but this development is taking place on the basis uh, of uh, existing statistics. Mm -hmm. These statistics were developed in the last census in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, in 2000, when the census was conducted, a uh, government tried to establish uh, how many people were in the country. Mm -hmm. and established there were 9.9 .9 people. Mm -hmm. Where are these people geographically uh, located? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the demographic structure of the population? How many are below 18? How many above 18? How many people uh, were being born? What were the deaths and so on and so forth? Uh, government tried to establish uh, uh, the concentration of these people, where people are located and so on and so forth. On, on the basis of the statistics which were collected at that time, the government has been planning and has been delivering uh, facilities and social services. Mm. But over the last 10 years, of course, there have been massive changes. Mm. Uh, people have been born, mm. uh, people have uh, died, uh, developments have taken place, new uh, um, uh, dwelling areas have come up, mm. uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, people have shifted around, moved around, mm. and the concentrations that were there in 2000 may not be the same concentrations of individuals who are there at this time. Mm -hmm. So we need to update the statistics that we have mm -hmm. so that we can better target uh, the provision of services. Uh, I will give you an example, uh, uh, Tileshe. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, I don't know if you can remember 10 years ago, mm -hmm. there were hardly, <laughs> there were hardly any people in Chalala. Mm -hmm. No, no. Mm -hmm. You recall that Chalala I was only... That, that I remember very yes. well. Mm -hmm. Chalala was only known for some... Scandalous killer. Who killed the yes, people. there were some boreholes and oh, then that's some. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, if we were to try and provide social services on the basis of the statistics of 10 years ago mm -hmm. when we did the last census, mm -hmm. we would not provide any facilities to Chalala. Mm -hmm. But now, this census is going to update the information that we have on areas like Chalala and new compounds, not only in Lusaka, but elsewhere uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. So that then we can target the planning of government target the delivery of social services of government to places where uh, these services are, are Talking here. about Chala, it reminds me of uh, a few months ago His Excellency declaring one of the districts in, is it in Northwestern Province? Mm -hmm. One of the it's settlements Kelenge. as a district. Yes. Kelenge, is that Kelenge? Yes. Yeah, I think it goes on the, on, on, on the same line. Mm -hmm. But uh, one would uh, argue that how are you going to cover this war space? <laughs> Uh, have, you done, of, uh, yeah, have you done some work on how you're going to cover this space? Are you not going to miss some settlements or some people? Some yeah, mapping of some sort? Have, have you done anything? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, you want to take it? Uh, okay, I thought before you come to the census map, yes. I thought we should talk about the questionnaire. Mm. Because the theme of the, of the census for mm. this year is a slightly different in terms of the way the questionnaire has been structured. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I saw yeah. a copy. This is yes. a copy. Yes, yes. that's a copy. Yes. And, mm. uh, it's, it's going to give us uh, a very uh, relevant data that has never been there before, for example, in terms of sanitation facilities, mm -hmm. safe water drinking, and <coughs> issues of crowding, you know, like uh, the DSC has spoken about housing stock. That's right. Uh, I think those are the things that will be addressed. Okay. So the questionnaire is different, and of course it's machine-readable and scannable, meaning the information will be available very soon after. Well, this is a uh, machine readable? Yes, it is. Okay, I can see it has got mm. barcodes there. Mm. <laughs> oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that is, uh, that's one of the key features that everything will be very automated mm -hmm. and technologically advanced. Mm -hmm. About the mapping? No. About the mapping? No, on, yes. on, covering, uh, on covering the whole country, how mm. do we make certain that we cover yes, every square inch mm. of the country? Mm. The process of the census does not begin on the day of the census. Mm -hmm. It begins well in advance. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Some two years ago, a process called mapping 
uh, started. Mm. The mapping process is uh, an updating of uh, the, the features that exist in a particular area, an enumeration, called an enumeration area. Mm -hmm. What the census does is it divides, demarcates the entire country, all right, into uh, small geographical areas, mm -hmm. all right, which are called and so on. much smaller than that. Like oh, mm -hmm. much, much smaller. Okay. They are called standard enumeration areas. Oh, okay. All right. I see. So the whole country will be divided into 25,000 standard 000. enumeration areas. Mm -hmm. And each one of these enumeration areas will be given to an enumerator, one individual, who will go in there with a map literally a map of all the features and the houses and the roads and everything that is in that particular enumeration area, all right? And we'll go house to house, all right, mm -hmm. to make certain that everybody is, uh, is, is covered. Mm -hmm. It's a massive exercise, mm -hmm. but uh, there are 25,000 enumerators supervised by 8,000 supervisors to cover the whole country. So mm -hmm. we are certain we will cover the country. 25,000 enumerators, we talk about capacity in the public service. Mm -hmm. Is there capacity to do this exercise? There is capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, because what we're doing is we're using school leavers mm. uh, for, as enumerators. The school ones leavers? Who, yes, the ones who finished uh, grade 12 last year, mm -hmm. 2009. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones. And then, of course, we're using 8,000. Uh, uh, you know, some of them are teachers, some of them are you know, employees within the civil service. Mm -hmm. But I think the DSC can amplify on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, as I explained at the beginning, mm. uh, the census is a, a massive uh, undertaking. Mm. Uh, and uh, at the top you have cabinet and the secretary of cabinet mm. uh, putting their, the weight mm. of their uh, offices and authority behind it. Precisely because we have to get the whole of government uh, behind the process. Uh, behind the process. Mm -hmm. This is not a CSO process per se. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is a governmental process. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, all public servants, the entire public service, mm -hmm. all right, where they will be required, will be obliged to assist the effort. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for instance, there's some 350 or 400 uh, vehicles that are going to be required, okay. all right, mm -hmm. uh, in this exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, the government is not going to buy 400 uh, new vehicles. I see. So we will have to ensure that... Um, uh, existing capacity in terms of vehicles in the districts, in the ministries, in the provinces, uh, people make uh, vehicles, suitable vehicles available to support the effort. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us, as you can see, this process is being driven from cabinet office. Mm -hmm. All of us are going to be available to support, uh, to support the process to make certain that uh, uh, we have a quality census at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yes, a quality census will mean quality statistics, will mean quality decisions. I think. Yeah. You spoke about uh, recruiting school leavers. I, I do recall that uh, in the past, in some censuses in the past, uh, uh, pupils who are in school are the ones who were asked to, to do the census. Are we certain that we're not going to get such people in the, in the process this year? No, we are not. Uh, we are not. I mean, we are certain, <laughs> how should I be answering that? Mm. We are certain that we're not going to use the grade 11s, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. or the grade 12s, mm -hmm. because we didn't want to interfere with the school calendar mm -hmm. and the issue of examinations and the usual. So we got uh, the 2009 grade 12 levers, because then it provides a, a, a base where we can have quality data, mm -hmm. and also they are available. Mm -hmm. and, and it also provides some of them with an employment opportunity out mm. there. Mm. Mm. Now, uh, this, some of these school leavers, if I look at, uh, at this questionnaire, it looks quite, uh, it looks simple, but uh, I don't know whether they will all be able to understand it, <laughs> to, understand, to understand it so that the, the, the information that they take mm. is uh, correct as given by the person they are, they are counting. How are you going to ensure that? In fact, I, uh, there are going to be ad advertisements running in the daily newspapers, on mm. TV and radio, mm. for the recruitment exercise for the enumerators. Mm. And once these are done, once they are recruited, at the district level, we are not transporting anybody from Lusaka, for example, Excellent. to go to, say, uh, Solowezi or To Chibata. go and count people in no. Solowezi. Uh -huh. We want to use the local people there, the local mm. uh, school leavers. Mm. So once that is done, 
we have what they call a master trainers program mm -hmm. where we've identified senior civil servants and middle management civil servants mm -hmm. who will be trained and they will then train the enumerators okay. in the exercise of the questionnaire. I see. Mm -hmm. Now you spoke about not importing persons from Lusaka. What happens in, in an area where they, they are not enough school leavers? What will happen? Are you going to, to bring in some people? No or what way. happens if <laughs> if somebody in Lusaka begins, you know, finds some way of exporting the these school leavers to go and work in some district? Yes. Well, How are you going to protect the districts, if I may put it that yes. way? Well, uh, firstly, the, the 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 situation is such that uh, we are sure that there are sufficient uh, school leavers mm. in all the districts right around the country. Okay. Of that, we are we are we are certain. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, difficulties. We are certain. We, we are certain because um, uh, we have been working very closely with the Ministry of Education, yes. and the Ministry of Education have been able to indicate to us uh, how many school leavers are in particular areas and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we, we are confident mm -hmm. about our statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to uh, making certain that there is no importation of um, school leavers from other areas, mm -hmm. uh, what we have done is that um, we have um, decided to do the recruitment at the level of the district, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. So it is the district commissioners, all right, and uh, district uh, officials supported by the provincial permanent secretaries and uh, the provincial statistical uh, statistics officer mm. who will be responsible for, for, for the recruitment. Okay. The recruitment is not going to be done from the center. Mm -hmm. It will be done at the district. Mm. Uh, additionally, the Secretary of the Cabinet has uh, already uh, sent out written instructions okay. to the permanent secretaries, mm -hmm. all right, to begin the process of receiving uh, applications through the district commissioners. Okay. All right. So, so if you try to get your <laughs> relative <laughs> to go and apply in the month, it's very difficult. Is so. that so? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So there you are, viewers. There will be no interference from Lusaka. We've been assured and all the people that will be counting are people who are locals in the district. Because yes. obviously then they understand the language, they understand the culture, they understand the, the people mm. there. Uh, we are looking at uh, recruitment. Uh, can I just cover one point? Yes, please. Uh, which, you, which you had raised about uh, the complexity of uh, the, the questionnaire. Uh, the questionnaire and whether uh, from five school leavers would have the capacity to, to manage this questionnaire. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what is important to understand is that there's going to be a two weeks training okay. period. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we're not just going to take school leavers and uh, give them, them, them into <laughs> their hands and tell them to get on with it. Will actually uh, put them into training for a period of uh, two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, only those whom we um, evaluate as uh, being sufficiently proficient in the management of the questionnaire will be the ones who will be taken on. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So uh, that's how we shall manage that. Let's come to one of the discoveries of of the past. In the past, it was uh, discovered that there are people who were not willing to participate in the census either for religious purposes or just not wanting to to participate others give their own reasons uh, others it's traditional to say why are you counting us god counted us what message do you have to such people and what measures have you taken to encourage such people to participate in the census mm. or are these just rumors anyway <laughs> I, I, yeah i'd like to think that most of them are rumors uh, yes. but i do know that they do get some sects like yes that uh, religious sects that maybe really don't believe in the census process mm -hmm. but uh, i'm told and those of us who are very firm believers mm -hmm. we know that in the bible mm -hmm. the day jesus was born mm -hmm. they, they were actually going to a census count i i i i i, I remember that <laughs> yes. it's in luke actually emperor augustus is the one who sanctioned <laughs> the, the census so, yes so it doesn't make sense then that <laughs> that other people can use that uh, aspect of the uh, religion yeah. But uh, uh, notwithstanding that, what we are looking at is persuasion. We are, through the various fora in terms of publicity and uh, our various fora, we are asking that people should be, we are persuading people to be counted mm -hmm. because it's in their interest to be counted. Mm -hmm. And then also we are appealing to all of them that mm -hmm. uh, at least they must allow the enumerators into their homes. Mm -hmm. And not, you know, we hear stories of people chasing the enumerators, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. with dogs and 
can they please allow the people into their homes, mm -hmm. our enumerators? What about to those people who are... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I just uh, add on to, mm. on, on to this? Um, the, you, you asked about the message for, for the people out there who may have uh, difficulties or who may have hesitation about uh, uh, being counted. Mm. I, I think everybody should bear in mind what the end objective of the census exercise is. Mm. The end of objective is in order for government to have the data, the information, to be able to provide social services, mm -hmm. all right? For government to be able to target 